In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to set up audio reverb zones and how to use them. So let's go ahead. We'll set one up first. It's just a component. So we could actually just go ahead and add it to any component we want. And here we go right here. Now I've always used the add component part of the inspector, but I do want to point out that you actually can get these up here as well. Well, most of them, I think actually pretty much all of the ones that are in the add component, you can also get from up here. And you can also come up to the game object menu and we have that one there as well. And of course we can just right click and instead of just creating an empty, we can go straight to creating an audio reverb zone right in here. And I did not mean for it to be a child of the terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll zero this out. I'm probably going to move it anyway. But this double sphere is what we're actually looking at. And let's get a better angle at this so we can see it a bit better. All right, so these two spheres. So the way these work is you can go ahead and alter the sound to make it sound like, like you're walking on maybe a cobblestone street or walking through a swamp or a room with a carpet or maybe you've got a lot of echo as if you're in a cathedral or something. And if we go ahead and take a look at the reverb presets, a lot of these are already set up for us. So we can go ahead and just set up for padded cell It'll automatically adjust everything for you. And if for some reason you want to go ahead, maybe you don't like any of the ones that are here and you want to make your own, you can come down to user, which will unlock all of the sliders. And then you can go ahead and adjust them yourself. Very few times have I had to do that. So just to show this off, I'm going to go ahead, take stone corridor. It should have a lot of echo for me. And let's look at the only other two parameters that we have here, the min distance and the max distance, the min distance is the small sphere and the max distance is the larger sphere around it. And the way this works is outside of the big sphere, the reverb zone has absolutely no effect. But as you start to enter into the larger sphere, the distance between the larger sphere and the smaller sphere, the reverb will have an increased effect on the sounds. And then this minimum one with the one inside, this is the amount of area that has the full effect of the audio reverb. Let's actually go ahead and pull up the documentation. I think there's a little diagram that will demonstrate it probably a little bit better than what I'm explaining. And here we go, right down here. So we have the outer sphere and we have the inner sphere. You get the full reverb inside and in between the min distance and the max distance, the effect will increase as you get closer in. So let's go ahead and adjust some of these distances and take a look. So I'll play off the minimum first. As you can see, we can make it smaller. Remember, this is where the concentrated or the full reverb effect will happen. Make it bigger. And of course, we can do the same thing for the large one. Now let's go ahead and take a listen to exactly what it's doing. So let me actually click my player so I know where he is over here. So that's where he is. And my audio reverb is right there. Okay, let's go. So it's this way. Hear the echo? That's what the reverb does. Now, of course, you can change this. And as I walk out of it, and you, again, you can change this preset if you want, or go ahead and create your own. It's a very simple way to go ahead and add a bit of life to your scene. It's something that I really don't use a lot, but I really should. But the only thing I don't actually like about it is, well, there are spheres. And in some places, maybe you've got some long corridor or something and you want this effect inside of that corridor. I don't like it when it pokes through the walls of my corridor. For instance, maybe I just wanted a special sound right in here. And I could shrink things down, but then I'm going to be missing the corners here or it's going to be sticking out over there. What I found to work is to go ahead and actually use triggers. And when I enter this trigger, I'll go ahead and activate the reverb zone. And when I get close to the, when I get into the center of it, I'll actually just go ahead and attach that reverb zone to my player. And as he's moving around, then when he leaves that area, I just disconnect it. For me, I found that actually works really good. But yeah, go ahead, play around with the different presets and then also go ahead and make sure to play around with it on the user settings, see what you can come up with. Some of these I haven't used in quite a while. I'm not 100% sure what they sound like. But I can see me wasting time on it. 
That's kind of cool. Anyway, who uses reverb zones? Have you not used one before and now you're going to? Let me know down below in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.